Good evening, my dear students. So in this part of the module, we will talk about descriptive statistics. So this particular module will come in two parts. This is the first part. So in this part, this will actually be a review of your statistic lessons before. So concepts such as mean, median, and mode, range, standard deviation, and variance will pop up again here. So I know that you already know these concepts, but it's important to um, take a look at them again. How do you get the mean, for example, the variance, and the standard deviation in order for us to go to the next part of the module, which is, alamin na natin kung kailan ba or alin bang descriptive statistics ang gagamitin ko depende sa aking um, data type and level of measurement ng aking variable. Okay? So, let's start. So, descriptive statistics, kailan mo, kailan mo ipa-perform o ipa-conduct ito? After mo pong mag-gather ng iyong data, this is the next part. This is the next step that you will do. You would like to, or you would want to, summarize and organize your data or your data sets. Yung nakuha mong responses from your sample or from your respondents. Meron tatlong paraan para ma-describe, di ba? Descriptive statistics. Para ma-describe mo ang iyong data. Una ay ibigay mo ang distribution. Distribution is the frequency of each value. For example, ilan nagsabi ng um, strongly agree, ilan nagsabi ng strongly disagree, and so on. Central tendency, what's the average value? For example, what's the average um, time spent in social media? And variability or dispersion, how spread or gaano kakalat yung iyong datos? Okay? What's the difference between the maximum and the minimum value na nakuha mo? So, this is a research example, just so you can better understand it. So, for example, you want to collect or you collected the number of hours spent by students playing online games. So, syempre sa distribution, pwedeng magkaroon ka ng table, di ba? Tapos pinapakita mo doon ilan sa mga players ang nag spent ng 1 hour, ilan naman ang nag spent ng 2 to 3 hours, and so on. So, that's showing the distribution of the data. In central tendency, pwede mong sabihin yung average number of hours spent playing online games. So, maybe 2.5 hours in a week and so on. And then variability, what's the minimum and maximum number of hours spent uh, playing ML, for example? Maybe there are extreme values, di ba? Maybe some of them are able to spend more than 10 hours. Maybe some of them are only spending 1 hour in a day and so on. So, these are the three ways to describe your data. Let's first start with distribution. So, your goal is, gusto mo ma-summarize yung frequency ng lahat ng value na hiningi mo sa mga respondents. Okay? So, for example, if your variable is gender, oh, you would expect na dapat meron ka dyan categories ng male and female. Maybe some of them didn't answer this one because they don't identify as either male or female. So, this is a single frequency distribution because you have single groups, male, female, man or woman, and then no answers. And then, this one, it's a group frequency distribution. So, ang variable naman natin dito ay library visit in the past year. Kasi, if you, if you will um, individualize the responses, masyado mahaba yung table mo, di ba? What I mean is, maglalagay ka ng zero visit, one visit, two visit, so on. So instead, you, you're just going to group them into categories. So zero to four, six percent lang yung bumisita, six percent of the data, five to eight times, seventeen and more times, and so on. You have eight percent of the data. Oh, now, how about central tendency? What you want to do here is gusto mong ipigay kung nasan yung kita ng data, where's the center, what's the average of the data set. The most common is the mean, di ba? I think you know this process, no? You, you just have to add the values and then divide the sum by the total number of responses, kung ilan yung data. Ginagawa mo to pag may grade ka, di ba? So, 80, 81, 83, you will divide by 3 because you have 3 data sets or 3 data values. In median, kailangan ordered o nakaayos from smallest to largest or vice versa yung iyong data. And then, the number on the middle is your answer, is your median. So, 80, 81, 83. 
So naka range naman from smallest to largest, left to right. The median is 80 watts. Siya yung nasa gitna. The mode is the most popular or most frequent response value. So for example, most of your grades are 80 or two of your grades out of four is 80. Your mode is 80. This is the most frequent value. Okay. Just to demonstrate even further, so this is your data set, diba? So you have six values. You add all of them. N. N is your number of uh, responses, which is six, as I have mentioned. The sum is 57. So that's 57 divided by six. Your M is 9.5. Again, you already know this. Median number of library visits. Some of them visited only, only uh, thrice. Some even didn't visit at all some 12 times 15 times and 24 times so this is already ordered from smallest to largest ang problema mo dito ay meron kang dalawang middle numbers kasi even 6 6 yung ano mo values mo even siya so your middle values are 3 and 12 notice that there are two values here and two values here so definitely those are your middle values kapag ganoon pag dalawa yung middle values mo you have to um, get the mean of those middle values. Ibig sabihin, you add 3 and 12, which is 15, and divided by 2, because there are two middle values, you will get 7.5. Notice that this won't happen if wala yung 3. Kasi now you have 5 values, di ba? And then the middle number is 12. You have two values here and two values here. So already, your median is 12. Now, your mode is Again, the most frequently occurring, which is 3. Notice, or please remember that you can have more than um, one mode. Pwede by modal. For example, another person visited the library 15 times during 2020, for example. So now you have two modes, 3 and 15. Pwede ding walang mode, di ba? For example, ayun, pantay-pantay silang lahat. Ibig sabihin, kung wala yung 3, wala kang most frequently occurring, di ba? Kasi all of them, uh, isang beses lang, naganap all of the values. So you, you don't have any mode in that one. Okay, the last one is about variability. How spread out the response values are. So there are three ways. Range, to measure them. Standard deviation and variance. So kapag range, you want to know how far apart the most extreme responses are. So most extreme, if you're talking about the maximum value and the minimum value, essentially what you're doing is you are getting the difference between them. Maximum value minus minimum value. Kung gano kalayo yung max and mean. Standard deviation, on average, how far each score lies from the mean. Later on in the illustration, you will better understand this. And variance, um, this is connected to the standard deviation. No? If you, if you uh, get the square of the standard deviation, you will have your variance. It's telling you how spread the data is. If you get larger variance, that means uh, magkakaiba-iba or kalat-kalat yung iyong data. Okay? You have 0, for example, and then you have 12, and then you have 95. So your data is spread, spread out. Notice that when, you, when you're computing with the range, you only need the max and the minimum. Later on, you will see that when computing for standard deviation and the variance, you will take into account all of the values of your data sets or from your data set. So again, computing for the range is very simple. You get the maximum, subtract it with the minimum. So your range will be 24. Next one. So this is the process when you are computing for standard deviation. It's quite long, no? Fortunately, there are um, Excel and calculator to ease the way, but sige, pasadahan natin ng konti. So you have your raw data right here, and then we got the mean. The mean is 9.5. I told you a while ago that when you're getting standard deviation, you're getting the average deviation of each value from the mean. So makita mo dito na minus natin each data from the mean. So 15 minus 9.5, 3 minus 9.5, and so on. 0 minus 9.5. So you're getting this values right here. Ibig sabihin, itong first one, the first data is 5.5 points away from the mean. If you have um, 
a number line, this is your mean 9.5. Pero yung data na ito, nandito pa siya, 15. So how far away are they from the mean? So this particular data is 5.5 point away from the mean. Meanwhile, 3 is this much away from the mean. 6.5, negative 6.5 points away from the mean. Okay? So what you want to do with the standard deviation is you want to get the average of all this deviation. That's your standard deviation. Pero kapag sinam mo, di ba, pag kumuha ka ng average, you will get the sum and then you will divide by the total number of responses, which in this case is 6. Pero kapag mak ang makukuha mo kasi palagi ay 0. Kasi meron kang positive and then meron kang negative values. Di ba? To... Um, to get the average, i-square muna natin yung data mo. That's para, syempre, pag in-square mo yung negative, magiging positive na siya. And then you will add them. That's the sum of the squares. Okay? And then you will divide it by, not n, but n minus 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. So, 84.3. Okay? Actually, you already get your, this is already your variance. 84.3. And then finally, you will put it in a square root because remember, this is a square value. So if you square root it, you will get um, 9.18. That's the average deviation from the mean of your data. Mm. So in the average, its score deviates from the mean by 9.18 points. Okay. And then, again, your variance is just the square. The square of this one. Of your standard deviation. So, 84.3. It's better if you look at the standard deviation rather than the variance, actually. But take note that the larger the variance and the standard, in the standard deviation you're getting, that means that your values are spread uh, more spread apart. Okay.